Our third and final primary fundamental is follow through. Follow through. What does that mean? What does that mean to you guys? What's that? Be ready for the next ready shot. Ready for the next shot. Okay. So one of the one of the great things about America and about the industry that we're in is that there's differences of opinion and different philosophies. And I actually think that's great because it, it stimulates thought and it's how things develop and everything. Remember we have shooting and we have gunfighting, right? Shooting and gunfighting. If I am going to shoot, if I'm gonna shoot, you guys can see I have this big beautiful bullseye here, correct? Everybody see that? And we talk about follow through, check your ears. If I'm gonna take and shoot, an example of good follow through would be to come up on that target, press the shot, let me set up for another demo here, would be to come up on target, press the shot, resettle my sights, prepare the trigger, take the slack out so that I am ready to go again. Everybody understand that? And that needs to become semi-reflexive, that I am literally shot, reset, and I'm ready to go again. If I'm shooting two, I'm ready to shoot 22. Everybody understand? That's great. Probably the most powerful human force that exists is necessity. Necessity. So I want you to imagine for a moment that I'm engaging that target, but when I break that shot, he has a partner. You guys understand that? He has a partner. In fact, I even tell you that in scenario. I say, I'm letting you know this guy's not alone. Somewhere on your flank or somewhere behind you, he has a partner. How many of us would break that shot and resettle that gun on the target and reset the trigger? Or how many of us would immediately begin worrying about where that partner is? Who thinks that's an issue? You guys think that's an issue? Yeah? It depends on level of anxiety. It depends on level of anxiety. In fact, if he has a, a partner, I might not even finish him off. I may be just simply getting rounds on him and moving to his partner as quickly as I possibly can. Could that be happening? Step over here to this target. Take a look at this. I may be forced to start doing things semi, semi unconventionally out of necessity. These two bad guys are at play. They're both at play. So I literally may start this encounter And what am I doing? I'm breaking rules. I'm breaking rules. I fired that first shot from compression at this guy. Did I reset my trigger, take the slack out and prepare for another shot? No, no. what did I do? Sure. I was driven by necessity. necessity. And the necessity was to do what? To hit his friend. And then the immediate necessity was to come back and hit him again. Is my marksmanship bullet on top of bullet like it was over there? Did I manage my sights and trigger correctly? In my opinion, I did. I put bullets into the vital zones and I did it quickly, very, very quickly managing those two targets. What happens if I really want to be good at follow through? I really want to be good at follow through. And I've been told to do what? Resettle my sights on the target and prepare that trigger for the next shot. So I come up and I break that shot, resettle my sights, prep that trigger, take out the slack. Is this correct? Is this correct? No, I have an empty gun. What's the greatest necessity in my universe right now? Load my gun. Get my gun loaded back up. You guys understand that? Two plus two equals what? Four. Four. I want you to imagine your house is on fire. Two plus two equals what? Four. It means get the hell out of your burning house. <laughs> the right answer at the wrong time is the wrong answer. Do you guys understand that? <clears throat> if I am in a narrow tube and I have no one to my left and no one to my right and no one behind me and all I've got is this bad guy in front of me and I can prepare that trigger in a great ideal sort of way, that's fantastic. But if I'm not, I'd better start looking around. What happened at Walmart? What happened over there? Didn't look around, right? Okay. We have a friend who's a cop here in town. He stopped a robbery at Starbucks. And guess what? The hold off in the parking lot came in. She put a pistol up to his head and pulled the trigger. Luckily it was on safe. He never saw her. 
The whole event was over. They looked at surveillance and saw a girl come in and put a gun up to the back of his head. Okay? Alex, I'm going to steal you for a second here. I need you to aim at my bullseye right there. Okay? Yep, go ahead and draw out. And all I need you to do on that bullseye, the big purple bullseye there, is I need you to just give me five really good shots, well aimed, good follow through, good fundamentals. All right, holster up. Alex, while you were shooting, um, what did Chris Melendez do? No idea. You have no idea? No idea. What would you say if I told you he started out and his hands were in the front and that was his brother? And as soon as you started shooting his brother, he actually moved his hands to the small of his back where he has a gun and he's going to take and he's going to kill you. He's actually in your cone of vision. He's not back here. He's in your cone of vision. But you didn't see him. You're right. Because you were so focused. One thing we don't have to train, I do not have to teach any of you how to do, is tunnel vision. I don't have to teach anybody how to have tunnel vision. That just happens all by itself. You guys understand? So an example of terrible follow through, look at our little middle lower orange circle. Everybody see that, right? This would be awful follow through. Awful follow through would be that I line up my sights and I'm scanning before I even break the shot. You guys understand that? That's terrible, it's terrible. But there's an artificial element when we train on paper or we train on steel. If it's not steel, it doesn't fall. And it is what? Technically, these targets are still up. Technically, I should still be shooting, right? So we have to imagine at some point that, okay, I've shot enough. Technically, I should do full mag dumps on every one of these targets because they're still up. So we have to hit a reasonable point where we say, that's enough. I'm now gonna take and start to look for other bad guys. Do you guys understand that? Okay? I'm not saying you're wrong if you stay up on target. I'm not saying you're wrong if you start looking around. Our definition of follow through is the continuous application of the fundamentals till the shot has broken, the sights have resettled on target, I've gained a given result, and I need to do what? Search and search. Start looking for other issues. You don't know how many bad guys there are. If you yank off target prematurely and that happens, that's a problem. If you stay on target and you manage that trigger precisely and his buddy comes up and puts one behind your ear, that's a problem. That's a big problem. If you stay on target so long that you don't realize you're empty or that you're bleeding from an arterial gunshot, that's a problem. Everybody understand what follow through is? Shooting, no one shoots back. Gunfighting, they do. They absolutely do. There's been nobody in the Olympics who has to scan and assess thinking one of the line judges is gonna come up and stab you in the ribs. It doesn't happen. This is a little different. Cool? That's our philosophy on follow-through.